Are you routinely eating this sugar alcohol that has been linked to heart attack, blood clots, diabetes, even some kidney dysfunction, fat gain around the mid abdominal flank and butt area, and it's even been connected to arterial injury. If you consume a lot of sugar alcohols, this informative video might just save your life. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Melissa Gallagher. If you're new, welcome. I'm really well known here on YouTube and in my patient community for educating about ingredients to avoid as well as educating about ingredients that are harmful to your health. And this particular sugar alcohol is extremely pervasive for a lot of diabetic-based foods, sugar-free foods, and even keto-friendly foods. And if you haven't heard about the latest research, I'm gonna share with you the Cleveland Clinic study that was released at the end of February that kind of blew the world apart in terms of this really popular sugar alcohol. And it is called erythritol. So let me just kind of clarify, this video is not clickbait by any means. I'm going to seek to answer if this is a safe sugar or if it's something that is extremely dangerous for you particularly that you want to avoid. Now one of the huge red flags about this particular sugar alcohol is that even if it's not listed on the nutrition label of your food, that does not necessarily mean that your food is lacking in this sugar alcohol. This is particularly problematic when the FDA does not require sugar labeling. So you could inadvertently be consuming the sugar alcohol and the labeling on your food product might be labeled as artificially sweetened or naturally sweetened or sweetened with natural compounds. This sugar alcohol is extremely pervasive. It's in ice cream, candy, gum, cookies, cakes, protein bars, fruit spreads, yogurt. It is everywhere. So let's dig into the Cleveland Clinic study. And it really delved deeper into the quantity of sugar that is being consumed by the masses. And when I say the masses, a lot of people are very conscious that sugar is not great for our health. It's actually harmful and kicks off heart disease and assortment of, a, of other degenerative diseases and is linked with a weakened immune system, gut imbalances, you name it. I know you guys are educated about that. With that, we're seeing alternatives to regular sugar, white sugar, brown sugar. We're seeing sugar alcohols. And there are a whole class of sugar alcohols. Erythritol is at the high category in terms of sugar alcohols that are not absorbed well by the body, meaning 90% of the sugar based on this study and even previous studies to this, 90% of the sugar alcohol gets into your bloodstream. And this is problematic in the whole class of alcohol, sugar alcohols, erythritol is up there in terms of your body's inability to properly digest, assimilate, and detox this sugar out of, of the cells. And the study really kind of blew the lid on what we already knew about sugar alcohol, some being more problematic to detox. The study looked at an average intake of 30 grams a day. Now, most people, if you're on keto or doing diabetic and consuming erythritol, you're gonna be getting anywhere from three to four grams per serving of a keto or sugar-free, sugar alcohol-based product. But if you eat three to five to 10 of those, or maybe you're using erythritol in your baking products, it might be higher. So the study looked at 30 grams being the point where we see a significant change in cardiovascular health. So that's something to be aware of. You might be only be consuming three or four grams of this on a daily basis, but know that even one gram, a half a gram, five grams or 10 grams, the inability of your body to digest this alcohol is significant. So whether it's a half a gram or 10 grams that you're consuming, that is going to be in your blood circulating. And the study shows it takes two days for your body to detox this out, that your max erythritol levels in blood serum, so serum blood testing, the patients in the study, they have high levels of erythritol. And this is where it gets kind of tricky. Many of you might not find this to be a risk factor, factor and that's okay. But knowledge and education and awareness is really key. If you have any underlying health conditions, this is definitely one you want to eliminate from your diet. If you have any blood clotting tendencies, if you have blood clots, kidney disease, 
heart disease or risk of heart disease or any metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndromes are gonna be PCOS, hormonal imbalances, metabolic imbalances, weight gain, obesity, strokes, stroke risks, as well as individuals that have kidney imbalances, kidney diseases, this sugar alcohol is definitely one you want to avoid. One of the key takeaways with this Cleveland Clinic study is that erythritol impairs insulin sensitivity and increases insulin resistance. Now this is a huge element for anybody who's in any type of pre-diabetic state, as well as ramifications if you are dealing with diabetes. So this is another reason why I recommend avoiding this if you can. And actually the study shows that it not only impairs the insulin sensitivity your body has, but it also increases your sugar and food cravings. So another element that makes us a negative, to be honest with you. Now for regular athletes and folks that don't have this risk category that are following keto, mm, three or four grams on a daily basis might not be terrible. But at the end of the day, this study looked at a mega dose, three to 10 times greater than normal intake at 30 grams. But the reality is I have some patients that do intake 20 grams of erythritol and sometimes more on the daily. And one of the things that we see, the study looked at the development, the blood-based plasma clotting development is extremely enhanced with this circulating sugar alcohol in the bloodstream. That the arterial risk, the arterial damage, the arterial injury to your vascular channel, your cardiovascular, your arteries, and even the kidneys it's a huge risk factor. And in fact, folks were developing blood clots. They had great, greater instances of fibrin, which is the density, kind of the clumping, clumping in the protein density of the blood. And that tends to be where we see more blood clots. This is something, this is a category, if you can avoid it, it's a risk factor for any underlying cardiovascular incidents, episodes from strokes to heart attack. And even with cardiovascular blood clotting, we're gonna be also assessing and talking about brain health. That wasn't specifically put into the Cleveland Clinic study, but it just goes without saying that if you have greater fiber development, the smaller vascular channels, like those into the brain, into assorted organs and glands, they bear a risk as well with this type of sugar alcohol. So I leave it here with you, obviously, with any choices, you are in the driver's seat and you have responsibility for your own self-advocacy. But in my own life, we have completely eliminated this sugar. It wasn't honestly something I was, I've been consuming at all. I'm not a fan of sugar alcohols. I'd rather go with regular plant-based sugar or honey or a date syrup. It's just much more natural, but I also am aware there's a population that chooses sugar alcohols. So if you are choosing sugar alcohols, just be aware that erythritol, you want to read the label and you particularly want to read the label that shows sugar alcohols and the, quant the gram quantity. I'll share with you this one keto bar that I sometimes would grab as a snack. It's just, it was so good. It had three or four grams of erythritol, and I am no longer buying those just because I have a risk factor underlying blood clotting and stroke risks and heart attack risks that comes with my family that I, I am choosing to eliminate all of my risks when it comes to cardiovascular incidents, episodes, and reducing blood clotting. So this is, I hope, really helpful. I hope it gives you an idea. In general, a two or three gram a dose of erythritol every now and then is not harmful. What is harmful is repeated daily use that's getting up to that 30 gram dose that was the mega dose that was analyzed by the Cleveland Clinic study. But I do wanna share with you, I will post all the studies about this sugar alcohol in the description box below. I welcome your questions, and if you're curious about other safer sugar alcohols, let me know, and I'll do a video on that as well. So thanks for tuning in, friends. I always appreciate the opportunity to educate you on health and wellness, and I hope that if you are new, you'll hit the subscribe, give me a like, follow here, and become a part of our natural health wellness community. I'll see you on our next video.